So welcome back on a Friday. Um, there are going to probably just be a handful of us. Summertime is always um, hit and miss for everybody. We've got different vacations and, and family schedules. And so we um, get to see different friends every Friday. So that's kind of fun too. So um, I would love to find out what we're talking about today. <laughs> Does anybody know? It, you know, I love how the topics just flow. I mean, it takes a little while. There's a trickle, right? <laughs> in the beginning, it's a trickle. But then in the, after a little bit, it kind of, we figure it out and um, kind of the spirit lets us know, oh, okay, that's what we're talking about today. So I'm just curious if any of you have a starting point. And you have to start somewhere and we get started and then other conversations um, happen. So just curious if there's anything that anybody's thinking about, anything from last time, from a long time ago, anything as you're projecting forward, I don't know. Try to leave you that space to think about it and see summertime i don't know that's got you thinking of different things or experiencing things differently if you've been able to slow down if that's been something that you've been able to do and had some experiences with or not uh, interesting that you said slow down again because <laughs> that's what i was thinking but i'm like we've talked about it so much already <laughs> <laughs> I still like want to talk more about the how to slow down because like I have seven kids and three little ones three of them are six 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 four and two and it's just like I feel like if I slow down give them to me please I won't you know the essential things won't happen so okay so how do you slow down how do you slow down when you're in the middle with uh, of that time period when you have little people. I think Michelle and Emily both could probably speak to that because they're on the other end of that. I'm putting you both out there. Come on, girls. I I think sometimes we think it has to be a big time frame. Sorry, I'm trying to find a spot where my internet will let me do this outside. Um, like it has to be slow down as in like, at least in my mind, nothing, doing nothing for like days and hours and weeks. And maybe slow down at certain times of our life is more like, okay, it's six o'clock. The energy level starts to come down and we do a story. We sit around the table, we play a card game, like something that changes the rhythm and brings the energy level down maybe, or brings the activity, maybe it's like, okay, we're going to take one thing out of our schedule. We're going to, anyway, something along those lines. Yeah. So just a little bit of a slowdown, a little bit slower than normal, not a huge halt. Yeah. We don't have to quit everything. Maybe we just change something. My father-in-law told me once that a change is as good as a rest sometimes. You know, that's really great that you brought that up. Okay, hold on. A change is as good as a rest sometimes. I really like that. And, you know, I I hope I don't get old um, as I, I mean, um, I hope you guys don't get, I already am. I'm going to be 58 on Sunday. That's so crazy to me. I'm two years away from being 60. That's nuts. People were, um, oh, people were old back then. So that's just, you know, when I was young and looking at people, I just thought, what? That's okay. Hold on. I just, that's funny. I wonder if, sh oh, Shari needs the link again, ladies. So hang on one sec. I'm going to give that to her and I can't talk at the same time. So if somebody else has thoughts about this, um, please share. I was just going to say, <clears throat> I haven't taken the time to slow down <laughs> and my uh, things are kind of changing for us because my son will be heading out on his mission next week. Well, he's home, home MTC 
so I haven't even really had a chance to, I feel like I haven't really had a chance to even breathe for a little while. So I'm hoping once he gets to the MTC, we can kind of slow down a little bit. That's a crazy time. And that's, you feel that difference, don't you? When you've got a lot of things going on and there's just not much time to breathe, you feel that change in your family, you know, dynamics and in your home. And it's just, it's really different, isn't it? Yes. And not in a good, not in a good way necessarily. I mean, it's fine, I guess. I just, I always, I like things to be calmer. So when we're in that, you know, I am so ready for it to be done. And that's interesting that you would even say, you know, once we get him, because once he's in the MTC, that means he's gone and you're not, you know, you're not going to see him. But even with that, you know, it's almost a welcome thing because then, you know, things will kind of slow down and go back to normal. Yes. Yeah, really interesting. It's hard to slow down. It's hard to give us permission to give ourselves permission to do that too. And I think, okay, I know I said something that I, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, it's hard to give ourselves permission to do that. Um, it's also hard sometimes to figure out because Jen said something really important. Um, I'm afraid that then we won't get the essentials done, you know? So, so there's another whole conversation on, Hmm. What are the essentials? Because sometimes we get that a little bit goofy too, right? Um, I mean, I'm not saying any of you do, but I definitely do. I get mixed up about that sometimes. <laughs> and then I find myself later looking back and going, oh, I, I so did not need to do that. Darn. If I, if I had known that before, that would have been so much easier. Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, that was, that goes along with my thinking too, that I was, I've been wanting to for like a week now. Um, someone gave me the idea to, to do a brain dump because I'm like, well, how do I know what are the most important things, what to prioritize when everything feels so important and a lot of things feel urgent. So, um, but they said to do that urgent, important um, quadrant. Oh, so yeah. you have one is important and urgent and then important and not urgent and then not urgent, not important, and then not, and then urgent, but not important. So she just said, try to spend a lot more time in the important, but not urgent. And that's like, I think that's what makes me feel like I'm not, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to is because I'm not doing enough of that. I'm focusing on like the urgent, important and the urgent, not important, probably most of the yeah. time. Right, right. Running around, putting out fi little tiny fires. Do you have something to say? Oh, my my thirteen year old was like raising her hand. I guess she was just scratching her head. So it oh, sounds yeah. like she has if something ever, to if say. If ever she wants to, she is more than welcome what? to participate. Here she is. Hi. Hello there. It's good to see you. I've got to really work on getting that young women's group going again. Summertime, everybody I think is playing, and so nobody's on the on the Marco Polo, I think the Zoom works better. I think everybody likes to be together all at once. So we need to do that and make sure we get you on there too. That'd be super fun. Yeah. Good, I'm glad you want to. I think that's great. Um, so how do we go about determining? This is the thing is I wish somebody else would do my brain dump for me, <laughs> you know, here, just, uh and then figure out for me what are my most important things what do i need to be spending time doing but then i think well isn't that what you could find out through prayer lori <laughs> you know like why are you doing that because you really can we really can find out what what do i need to do today i know i talk about that a lot but it's because it's been the most effective thing for me and it's also the thing band-aid it's also the thing that i'm not doing when things aren't going well you know it's like things aren't going well and for a while you're kind of i don't know if you do this but i do this and i think oh come on <laughs> because i'll be thinking huh things aren't going so well huh? i 
I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then after I take a moment and, or more and really think about it, I realize, oh my goodness, I, I stopped doing this or that, you know, some one of those key essential things that I should be doing all the time. So taking my own advice, listening to, I, I do really like Brooke Snow, and that's kind of what I was referring to earlier. You're going to get tired of me because I talk about the same things. But I like when Brooke Snow talks about that forgiving yourself, coming back and beginning again, you know, just, okay, so you forgot. Okay, so you were doing a brain dump, you were staying on top of your list of essentials, you know, whatever it is, and you got out of the habit because you had a crazy day. And so what? So then go back to it. Just start it again. You don't need to beat yourself up over it. You just need to start it again. Look at those beautiful faces. All three of them on the screen. Three beautiful girls, mom and two daughters. I love it. That's so sweet. Um. Anyway, but I, I think we do that, don't we? We kind of beat ourselves up where we, we, we should just get going again, right? Anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Jen. I love that. That's totally what I've been thinking because yeah I had a few really good weeks like a month or two ago and I was doing the brook snow stuff and I was like I, I started getting up at six I made that commitment and then it was really good but then I was like I I think I'm scared of it because I don't really know how to pray a lot of time like I feel like I don't know how to pray but I do I've, I've been doing it my whole life but I feel like I still don't know how right. exactly and yeah. um like, should I spend my time writing or thinking or like talking in prayer or just pondering or meditating? And then, but then I started, I realized it helps me a lot with my physical stuff to go for a bike ride. So then I started going for a bike ride at six and my husband would sometimes come with me, which was awesome. And, but then I stopped doing the prayer stuff. And then I don't find like as the focus prayer time during the day. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I already, I thought it was so great. And I was like, yes, this is it. And then I already stopped doing it to do the bike ride, which is also important because I feel way better with my feet and stuff. So I'm like, okay, well, I have to go back to it, but I don't know if I can get up earlier because I'm also super tired already from getting up at six. Right. And I fell asleep like driving the other day at a stoplight. And I was like, oh my gosh, I actually just fell asleep. I'm like hitting myself in the face. And so I'm like afraid to get up earlier because I can't always get a nap later. So yeah, it's just these these choices we have to figure out. Right. Well, and here's the thing. This is what I notice about me is that I do. And I say the exact thing that you just said. It's funny that you just said that because I was going to say this. So I say I need to figure this out. And that's my problem. I need to figure this out. Right. I don't have a clue. <laughs> so why am I looking to me to figure it out? I'm not saying that you don't, Jen. But uh, so often it's just go back to him and say, okay, shoot, I thought I had this all worked out six o'clock. So what do I do? When do I ride my bike? When do I study? When do I have conversations with you? What's a good, what's a good time for me to work all that out? I'm curious, Michelle, what you have to say. Come, come. Oh, here. I was just going to ask you because you guys are all talking about this brook and a brain dump. Can you guys explain that? I, I don't know if I was here or missed that, but can you explain to me what a brain dump is and all of that? Mm -hmm. So brain, a brain dump is separate from Brook Snow, but a brain dump is when you are just, you. well, for me, for I'll tell you what it is for me and then Jen can add whatever, whatever she wants to add and anybody else. Um, it's when you've got so many things going on in your head that you're trying to keep track of that maybe you're you're not getting to sleep at night you're waking up in the middle of the night you you just don't have the clarity of thought that you want to have because you're so worried that you're going to forget one of these things that's going on in your head um or you just have a lot of stress and things like that so if you take a little bit of time take a piece of paper multiple pieces of paper whatever it is your phone and you start just writing down well, so a big, large brain dump is you're just you're just trying to get everything out of your head onto a piece of paper. So you're just throwing it all down there so that now it has been captured. It's written down somewhere. Um, the next step is then to take that. And, and if you need put things on a calendar or, you know, whatever it is that you need to do, but have this all 
written down somewhere so that you now can focus on other things or sleep or, you know, not be so stressed and worried because you know that you're not counting on just your feeble mind anymore. You've got this all written down. And then Jen, um, I'll let her speak to what she was talking about, but it's a concept that, uh, that you learn about the, the box, the four quadrants and determining the, the importance or the urgency of the items that are on your list to help you. Cause sometimes you're just dealing with things because they come up, not because you really need to, or have, you know, or, or not because you really need to right now, but just because they're right in front of you. And so you spend time maybe doing things you don't need to. Anyway, Jen, I'm sorry. I'll let you. No, that was great. It's like, yeah, just a way of getting the thoughts out of your head and just writing down everything. Try to write down everything that's in there, but that sounds overwhelming. I, I'm like, when am I ever going to find the time to do that? It's going to take like two hours. Yeah. So just sometimes, yeah, just, so I keep a, a notebook that's just for that. And so when I just, when I feel overwhelmed, I'll just add more things to it. Just ongoing. Uh huh. And I never get them on a calendar or anything, but just getting them out of my head helps me so much because then I can relax and sleep. Yeah. yeah Melanie. One idea that I've heard that's been helpful for me is to keep two different lists and I actually have an app it's it's I think it's through checklist.com I think the app is just called checklist but um, I'll have a separate checklist for like I guess more urgent things that need to be done like in the next few days or the next few hours or whatever um, and then a separate list for um, like more long term projects that need to get done so that um, when I have the time to work on a bigger project, I can look at that list, but otherwise it's not cluttering my other list of things oh. that I'm trying to get done in a okay. shorter time. That's a good idea. I like that. That makes sense. And then the Brooke Snow is just, she's a resource. There's a podcast, Michelle, that is Brooke Snow. And there are just so many principles on there that I've learned and found really helpful in my life. Um, just so many when i've talked about the floor goals and the ceiling goals that's her um the forgive yourself um come back and begin again that's her that's what she teaches as part of um, christian meditation um there's just a lot of principles talking about our true identity how we have two two identities the one that is our divine nature who we can be and then the natural man and that we get caught up so much in the natural man and we need to just re recognize the difference between the two and and go to the our true identity more often get that negative um, feedback out of our heads so that we can move forward because so many times that like i was thinking jen when you were saying you know i don't really know how to pray i don't really i have those feelings too and i've talked to my sister-in-laws who are these just giants to me, these spiritual giants. And they'll say, oh my goodness, I think we all have that. And I think that so much of that is Satan. Um, just talking to us and saying, you don't really know how to do that. You, you're you not really doing that right. Or you're not gonna get any answers, um, I, whatever it is. I think so often we allow that negative dialogue to come into our heads and it's false. It is definitely, it is not true, but oh, how powerful it can be. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have been wrestling with things like that for the past month. And I think it's because I'm, I'm trying to start this new thing again. In fact, Michelle is part of our, Michelle and Lindsay and I, are trying to find out what it is the Lord wants us to do as we try to teach families more about how they can um, teach their families at home, give them the confidence to do that. And I, I think that it's something that uh, that that does that Satan doesn't want to have happen. And because I am just fighting with him, I feel like every other day, and I am so tired of it so anyway jen when you were speaking and saying that i thought oh i know those feelings i know those thoughts but they are not true and it's that i don't know if you experience this but you know when you when you get on your knees if you've been kind of struggling with it and you're you know like not really doing it or whatever then you get on your knees and if you're just going to talk to them if you're just going to pray and pray a prayer like you're used to praying then you'll get up and go on with your day and 
probably won't really be any different. But when I decide, all right, I, I've had enough. I, I can't, I can't figure this out on my own. This is not working, Lori. You know, you've done this so many times. And then I, I guess that begins to humble me. And so then I begin my conversation with him in a different way. And, and when I'm, when I approach him humbly like that, all of a sudden, it doesn't even matter what I was coming him to coming to him with anymore. I mean, not that it doesn't matter, but it's kind of like, all that's kind of washed away in this warmth and acceptance and love that I feel. And then I get a little more clarity about, okay, what's really important. I mean, sometimes I actually have to, I start talking and then I'm talking to him and realizing, okay, no, that's not really, huh? I thought that was so important, but that doesn't really feel important anymore. So, hmm, what am I here for, <laughs> you know? And so sometimes I'll just start um, expressing gratitude for the blessings I have and start kind of going through things that I hadn't really been thinking about and start thinking, okay, well, where am I right now? What are my problems and what are my, what am I, what can I see that I'm grateful for? And just start walking through that until I start feeling something and feeling more like, oh, this is what, ah, here it is. This is what we need to talk about. I, I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody. I, I don't know if I'm just just an oddball and I just can't figure it out and I have to keep going over this again and again but anyway and then uh, and when I'm doing that then I start connecting and I think oh yeah this is this is how I do it and I think it's interesting that in this time that we've been told you've got to learn how to hear him because you're going to need to know that I'm struggling so much more than I had before that why is that? Has anybody else experienced that? Okay, well, maybe we can talk about that because, oh, my word. I think I thought I knew. Well, here I am, right? So my birthday Sunday, I already said that because I'm, I still, I'm like, I can't believe I'm, you know, anyway. But, um, and I'm giving a talk on Sunday. Both Lindsay and I are speaking. She's speaking about family home evening, um, the importance of that. And then I was asked to speak about the importance of um, gospel learning in the home and family center, you know, that family centered learning. And I am reading everything and talking to people and doing, but I feel like I've just, I don't know, I have the, like, where did, how, I didn't mean to put that barrier there. Could somebody get that out of the way? I need answers and direction and, ah, uh, you know, it's just like quiet, peaceful, nothing. <laughs> and I'm thinking, no, I need stuff. So anyway, having my own little personal crisis over here. So you ladies talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Jen, go ahead. I'm talking a lot too, but so if anyone else wants to come in, just interrupt anytime. But um, yeah, I feel like it's it's just made me analyze a lot more if I if I am hearing hear him, and then I'm like, I actually don't think I know how, and like, but I have throughout my life, you know. But I've been analyzing it so much over the last few years, and like thinking I don't know how, and like trying but then I'll give up and then I'll I don't know it just I think it's put more pressure on certain types of us who really want to do it just right and mm -hmm. <laughs> um I guess also it kind of opens the door for that negative side to come in telling us that we don't know how or we're not doing it right or we should it should be coming like this when really the Lord's way is something different than what we're thinking so yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And definitely for us who are um, perfectionists, <laughs> um, closed, fixed mindset, that's, you know, that would be, that would be me. So, ugh. all right. So Shari, Shari's just this picture of peace and this Zen. So like, come on, share with us. What do you have to tell us? Well, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> nice to see you. I'm just in my bedroom because it's one of the only places I can go where it's quiet. 
Everybody, everywhere else is loud. Um, I've been going through a similar kind of battle inside my brain, but mine is, I feel so much pressure to want to do things right by my kids. And when, you know, homeschool versus, I feel I looked into a charter school for one of them anyway. And we're not really making ends meet. So I've been looking into part-time jobs. My husband keeps saying, I can do it. I'll get more overtime. So <clears throat> stew all that together in a nice little pot. Yeah. And I find myself just saying, can I please just like fast for a whole day and pray all that day and have you tell me the list of what I'm to do next right. semester. And I'll do it. When it starts. Tell me. Right. Tell me what I'm to do. And, and um, I'm going to bring up one thing that <clears throat> really has been in my mind, which is why I think it's really important. And I, I do believe that he'll give us those answers if we want them and need them. <sighs> I just haven't really decided exactly what to ask and, ha you know, have him help me sort it out because it looks like a big jumble in my brain, all the what ifs. Oh, but I learned something about the tobacco industry when they were um, teaching that cigarettes were good for you. It was good for your health and relaxing. And, and then when studies started coming out that cigarettes were bad for you, then um, they said to their, to their main people, we don't need to dispute these claims, dispute, sorry. We don't need to really challenge these claims or, or disprove them. All we need to do is introduce reasonable doubt and that will give us longer anyway that just stuck to me because i think how many times am i stopped in really good strong progression because of that because the adversary introduces that reasonable doubt about well i know i'm supposed to homeschool but there's this thing so maybe I should, does that make sense? Oh, does yeah. that happen to any others of you? And I just want to get rid of the, re the doubt that's there. Because Have you ever seen the progression thing where there's this point in the middle and if you have arrows going out of it in every direction, you progress maybe that much, right? All these arrows going out in all different directions, they're going a certain amount. But if you have a point and then a super laser focus, you can make that much progress, right? And I don't think that's accurate for us moms, though, because we feel like we're going in all these directions. But I wonder if it is, if you think back on Elder Oakdorf's talk of do all of this with that one laser focus. Does that make sense? Okay, now yeah. I'm rambling. Did that make anyone else think of something? <laughs> no, you have heads nodding. So I, there's, there's mom understanding. I don't know if that's like world understanding, but there's mom understanding, which is a whole separate category. I'm curious to know what Michelle's thinking. She's gone to a quiet spot from her work spot in the barn. So I just figured I was like, okay, I'll just finish my chores later. I need to sit, sit down and listen. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> no, I think this is really interesting. And I'm going to share with you this thing. So I just, just so I don't forget. So I have this book right here. It's a binder that was made for us by one of my um, my uh, one of our family's members, my brother, my husband's brother and his wife, and they made it for us years ago, 20 something years ago. And it says I'm going to share this with you. It is full of talks about families, um, mothers and fathers and families. And it says 20 years ago, President Spencer W. Kimball said the time will come when only those who believe deeply and actively in the family will be able to preserve their families in the midst of the gathering evil around us. That's 1980. Um, so that's 40 years ago. That's crazy. We wanted to share with you some of the words of our prophetic leaders in hopes that these talks will assist you in your efforts to actively preserve the family you love so much. Sorry, and strengthen your conviction of the importance of your role as parents. Anyway, so I've, I've read through this multiple times and I was, I've been reading through it again as I'm preparing, you know, to give a talk on Sunday. And there's just this incredible index of talks. 
and they're different subjects. Some of them I love, some of them, mm, you know, but, um, but it's just absolutely wonderful. But there are these reminders that in these old talks, and some of them are things that you can't say today. You can't say in today's environment. And so it's kind of interesting to go back and read some of these older messages. And here, because we're going to face so many things, but I think they're things that people, yeah, I will definitely. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I should not do that. But anyway, there's so many things that we're going to be facing that we need to be prepared for, but they knew that back then. We've been being prepared all this time. And I think we can take a lot of comfort from that. And I think you're right, Shari, if we have that laser focus on the things that not, not all the possible things that we could be having that laser focus on, but the thing that the Lord told us this morning we needed to focus on today. I think it's a day by day thing. And then what I was saying yes to was Melanie suggested that I post a picture of that index on the Facebook group. And I will do that. I was, I wanted to do that. So I'm glad that you asked because I thought, oh, I think it would be great for everybody to have it. Um, but you could also then add to it and make your own, right? Add all the talks that you've found since then that help strengthen you and help make you, you know, help you be more focused on what you need to do. But here's the thing, it is so easy to get to become overwhelmed because of if you look at it as a list of things to do, it's just can be incredibly overwhelming. We were having family home evening Monday night and I was kind of focused on the list thing. And um, I that's just it's just me. Uh, it's just kind of how I see things. and I need to get away from that picture. But here my daughter says, well, because I, I said something about I had a question wondering um, something about losing focus and needing to step back and and kind of reevaluate because maybe if you've just been doing the same things for so long, then you need to maybe like increase what you're doing so that you so that there's growth right so it's not just this stagnant thing that you're just you're doing the same old thing and she said well, I don't think that really happens, though. And um, she said, because if you're doing the basics, if you're doing all those things that that truly make a difference, the little things, you know, just daily prayer and and studying your scriptures and reading or listening to talks and and um, pondering, you know, about what you need to do and how you can serve in your callings better, things like that. She said, if you're doing that, then you naturally it, it you you feel different it changes you a little bit you know just as you as you continue to do that on a regular basis you slowly are changed and as you change then you want to do a little bit more you you have your own your own motivation comes into play now and you're motivated to do more and be more and it just kind of is this you it's this becoming she said and i thought oh yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. How do you know that? And I don't know that. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It was interesting because we talk a lot lately about this becoming. Um, so she said so. It, and then it's it's who you are. And it's no longer this list of things. I mean, not that you don't need to be aware of those those things to do. But but you kind of you wake up, you roll out of bed onto your knees because that's that's who you are. That's what you do. And I thought, huh, is, well, my thought was, oh, is that what comes from teaching your children these principles <laughs> and doing it as a family for all these years? That even though I don't have it because I didn't grow up with it and I still have to keep reminding myself, I still have to catch myself. I have to continue to learn this. But the great blessing is that, is that my children have that. They know that they have that foundation i mean they get to choose what they do with it right and they might choose to accept it and move forward or they might choose to you know reject it for a while and go off on a different path but i think that um there, there's so much more happening with our children than we realize or or um give the Lord credit for. <laughs> um, we, tr we try to see ourselves and our failings and our, our um, we don't even have to try very hard, do we? We just see that. We see the negatives, right? We see the lack. We see the holes. Um, 
and we don't give him enough credit because he makes up the difference. It, if we're doing, uh, there, one of my sister-in-laws said, she heard a thing that said, um, we create the environment, the spirit does the teaching. So we bring the children there we bring our families to that situation. We, you know, we provide the example or whatever. The spirit does the teaching. And then that child, that that child of God gets to to determine for themselves what they're going to do. But I don't know. I just threw a bunch of stuff out there and then kind of a jumble. But I don't know. I was really touched by the fact that this is for her just this. You know, she's a young woman, the young women's president in our ward, and she is a, a really incredible leader. She's a great example to the other adults that are around. I So many times adults have come to me and said, wow, I love talking to your children. They have such a depth of understanding. I, I, I find myself just talking and sharing with them all kinds of things, and, and then they're counseling me. <laughs> you know, how is that? And I think I think that that's how is that you build a foundation, and um, by these little conversations, these little things that happen every day, you know, we get so caught up in in have we done this? Have we done this? Have we done this? And really, the key is, did I did I ask Heavenly Father this morning what I needed to do, and am I, have I done that? Like that, really, whatever it is that He tells you to do that day, that's the most important thing for you to do that day over anything else, over anything that comes up. And maybe you get a bunch of distractions that come up in that day just to kind of give you an opportunity to choose what he asked you to do. Um, and, And I know sometimes that sounds like maybe it's oversimplifying things, but as I'm getting older, I'm the lessons that keep being like hammered into my head are it is simple lori you're making it harder you know that you or you're standing in the way but it is simple yeah melanie so something that's been churning in my mind um through this discussion is that um when i was in college i had a, a teacher a book of mormon teacher that really helped me understand how to have powerful scripture studies and Um, sometimes, you know, it, it'd end up being an hour or two hours. And sometimes it was all focused on one verse. You know, I, I could go really in depth and I'd write pages and pages and it wasn't always that, but I had these amazing experiences and then I became a mom and didn't have, you know, I, I lost a lot of my habits and things and have been judging myself for all these years, trying to figure out how to get that back. And I'm gradually accepting that I'm not going to get the same thing back. It's going to be different because I'm different and my life's different. And, um, and I think like, you know, with this new push to, to hear him and receive those, that inspiration, you know, I, I've been having like more pressure, you know, in my mind, like I've got to make this happen and I've got to make sure I'm feeling the spirit and, uh, Um, I've still felt the spirit, but I've, I've been judging, I think the experiences as it's still not the same thing that I'm expecting, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, just a couple weeks ago, I got to go to girls camp and my main expectation of the week, I guess, aside from, you know, helping the girls, as far as what I was hoping to get out of it was just getting to know people in my state because I moved recently and didn't really right. know hardly anybody there and i um, just having a great social time which was awesome but um I wasn't expecting exactly or I didn't I didn't have expectations around my testimony growing and um and I felt the spirit the whole week. I felt like my emotions were at the surface and I was just full of love and gratitude the whole time. And I think maybe because I wasn't having these expectations that I need to feel the spirit and I need to make this happen, that I was able to just, like, it just happened, you know, I just let it happen organically and felt it. And then I could have feel the beauty of it and notice that. Um, 
and it just reminds me, I get maybe it's just, you know, this principle that we see in other places, it reminds me in my singing lessons that, you know, if you try to force and make the sound resonate in different places, then you end up doing things with muscles and stuff that prevent it from working correctly. But if you release it and you just, you know, try to open and do the right technique without trying to force the right technique, then it, you just let it happen. And that's when it's beautiful. And so it just kind of relating that, I think for me, at least, um, I think I've been trying to force the spirit or force myself to have these experiences instead of just, you know, doing the things that invite it. You know, when I was at Girls Camp, it wasn't my focus to try to build my my testimony, but we were still doing the things to invite yeah. the spirit, you right. know, and and just let it happen and appreciate and accept whatever does come. I love that. I love that. I think that's such a good um, a good reminder. I, I think so many times we just not on purpose, but we put so many barriers between us and him. Um, and we don't realize we've done that because when those are gone and maybe the barriers might just be this list of worries, you know, that we're, we're feeling anxious and, and stressed, you know, and so we're not opening ourselves up to receiving that message. I don't know if you've heard, if you've ever, if you've listened to, but on the small seed still app, where it teaches you about meditation. I, I really love it and I highly recommend it because of the principles you learn if you do just the little um, Christian meditation 101. You know, it just teaches you how what what Christian meditation is, how it's different from regular meditation, and teaches you some principles. And I think it's really interesting, interesting enough for our conversation that I'm going to share it. And also because it's a reminder I need, and that's what I need to do because I stopped doing it, and that's I've had this change, this negative change happen. So I need to go back to this because it helped me prepare for prayer, if that that's kind of how I see it. But anyway, so she, she in fact Brooke talks about this idea of meditation can be preparation for prayer, and a lot of times for, as a mom that that might not be a bad thing. I mean, you don't have very many opportunities for that because you don't have very much quiet time. But if you can find a moment and have this idea, even if you're not doing the meditation, but you have these principles. So let me share the principles really fast. Okay, they are one, that when you're meditating, you tr are trying to be present right here in the moment, right? You're, you're gonna be sitting here calmly, quietly, zen-like, you know, meditating. So you are present. Well, one of, the, um, one of the names for God is, or one of the attributes of him is he is omnipresent. He is always present. So if I am being present in the moment, I am with God. So I love that. And the second thing is that the, um, the posture for meditation is you can be lying down, so you can be completely lying down, which is my preferred method. But um, the other one is you can be sitting, you know, just like a yoga position, right? Sitting and, you know, you can have your hands open or your hands like this, but, but it's this very open posture. Really interesting if you think about um, of Old Testament, prayers. You see pictures of Noah um, and he's praying and with his arms outstretched to God. There's lots and lots of scriptures that talk about prayer and about the people being having their arms outstretched to heaven or lying prostrate upon the earth, you know. Um, but this arms open, arms outstretched, very open receiving position. I don't know when we changed to this, you know this very close I, and I'm not saying there's I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that I'm just look at the difference between this very closed position and this very open position ready to receive from heaven and I think so many times we approach him and again there's nothing wrong with approaching him like this but we approach with that maybe mentally emotionally spiritually you know just kind of closed but we if we just think for a moment I can be present with God. I am going to be open to be receiving. Even if we just have those two thoughts, 
before we're praying. And then the third thing is, she said, you, when you're meditating and praying often, your mind wanders, right? Especially as a mom. Um, that's why brain dump even is a thing that came up as an, <laughs> as a tool, right? So your mind wanders. And so the thing is that forgive yourself. I mean, you notice it, ah, oh, forgive yourself, come back, begin again. No beating yourself up, no negative talk, just, oh, oh, whoops, okay, you know. And if you were, and she says, because you've done that in the meditation and you get in the habit of doing that, oh, what do you know? It starts creeping into your day. And so then when you, you know, you forgot to set the timer and you burned a batch of cookies, you don't think I was a major failure today and oh my goodness and add that to the list of things that Lori does wrong, you know, but you just think, oh, darn it. I'll have to try to remember to set the timer next time and you move on. And that's, that's the only impact that has in your life. Well, maybe the smell in your kitchen, you know, temporarily, but otherwise you just don't let that bring you down. If you think about, I was thinking about this when Jen's daughter was sitting next to her. And I was thinking if Jen, if your daughter were really struggling with something and she kept she you know she just kept um having a difficult time at it she was trying and she was you know really really wanted to get better but she was really struggling with it would you want her to be beating herself up and doing all this negative talk every time that she had to begin again every time that she caught herself and realized oh man i meant to remember that i wanted to make sure that i made my bed this morning without my mom having to tell me you know whatever whatever it is but would you want her to have that negative response and that negative, you know, and carry all that with her? Would, or would you want her to say, oh, darn it. Let's see. I wonder how I could do better about about that, you know, and how cute. And could mom, could I find somebody that could help me? You know, maybe someone could help me do better at that and help me to remember or something. Anyway, I don't know. I'm probably going all over, but. And Emily, were you going to share? Oh, no, sorry. I look away. I'm just waiting. Okay, go ahead. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, unless Emily was going to share. Were you going to share something, Emily? Okay. Uh, um, so I'm weaving together something that Melanie said and then everything that you said, Lori. Melanie made a good point that at girls camp, she experienced more peace and more spirit and healing and all that from not trying to force it, not trying to push it. And then you talked about um, mindfulness, being in the present. And that's a really interesting thought that God is omnipresent. And that, and I've, I've also experienced that through some of my own um, experiences with meditation and things, but also just, um, so I wanna flip that, sorry, getting to the point now. If I could for a moment about in relating to our children, because you're talking about relating to God, that's very true. And um, I think the same things might apply for relating to our children. Um, this summer I did a, I've done this program where the kids to kind of set up a framework of freedom where I say, here are lots of ways that you can choose to do these good things. You can choose anything. And you can earn tickets, you can trade the tickets for other things that you want. Basically, I wanted to set up a system of freedom where they can choose what to do with their day. And it's working really well. But I find myself feeling like, okay, now school's starting again. And <laughs> I'm there's a huge part of me that wants to say, okay, child, this particular child, you need to now perform on let's say math, the big bugaboo, right? It's time for you, you know, to become really good at this. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to keep that feeling that Melanie had of not maybe not trying to push things. And what you talked about, Lori, of staying in the present, having a framework so that things are getting done, but that we can get out of our mind, our brain a little bit more. Anyway, did that make sense? Does anyone have any feedback about that? I, I liked it. I like what you were saying. I want to hear what Jen has to say. Um, oh, there was so much, but um, yeah, not 
not pushing it. I think with the last thing you said about the math, it goes along with the thought I was going to share about just a lot of it goes back to, I think, being patient because I think a reason I give up so quickly, I start doing the get up early and having the good, you know, meditation sessions and or prayer. And it feels good, even though I'm not sure if I'm doing it right or whatever. But And even if I'm not getting that much, I still like have good days. I'm like, yeah, I need to do this. But then the distraction comes in and I stop doing it. And then I think that's part of the test though. Like if it was obviously, if it was really obviously, if we were getting clear answers every time and stuff, I think we would, it would be easy to do, but that's part of the challenge is that it's just like, it's the consistency over time that leads to the results. And so if we're not consistent over time, we're not going to get to the results. And so just being patient and also like, even if we feel like we get nothing, which has happened to me a lot. No, no, sweetie, leave it in the box. Um, maybe it's not then when we're supposed, to, when we're going to get something. It's later in the day when we're, because I think it's on the go when it comes more often. Like I have an example of when I was taking my son to the emergency room. I was, I didn't know what hospital to go to because we haven't really been to hospitals around here or anything yet or healthcare systems and. So I was like, I don't know where to go. I was like praying and I didn't feel anything. So I just picked one and just started going. And then on the way I was talking to my mom and she's like, is there a children's hospital nearby? And, and I was like, oh, I think so. And I like pulled over to look it up. And then I just called my husband to confirm if I should go like an extra 30 minutes to the children's hospital. And he's like, I was actually thinking that. And, and then, so I started, I decided and started driving there instead and as I was going I was like I felt the spirit so strongly like wow I know I'm being guided right now like in this moment I was almost to the other place but it had to it took me like getting almost there to get the answer that I was seeking but I want to I always want to like wait to get the answer and then act on it and then I lose patience and try to act on something that I've figured out on my own that may or may not be good so like with math I'm starting to lose patience too like well I want to have faith that the program or whatever we need will show up when my kids are ready for math or the tutor or whatever, but we're getting closer to high school. So I'm like, okay, I think I need to do something and make them do math. And So yeah, I know how that feels too, but I think I need to keep being patient. And then the other story I have that goes with that was that I, I was, I spoke in church last Sunday on Father's Day and I challenged myself because I was thinking of what President Nelson said. If you want to have more faith, do something that requires more faith. What would you, so you ask yourself, what would I do if I had more faith? So I asked myself that and I I thought, well, if I had more faith, I wouldn't be stressed about this talk. I wouldn't worry. I would just know that he was going to help me and inspire me. And so I really tried to do that. And I, I only had one time when I was like, really tempted to freak out about it and be like oh my gosh I'm not gonna get it done or I don't know what to say but I tried to focus on the positive and like just trusting that it would come together and it was like midnight Saturday when I finished it and I felt like I didn't even understand what I was writing I'm like I hope it makes sense but then it turned out like really good and I got tons of good feedback and my friends were like asking for copies of it and I'm like okay, well, it worked. He helped me (laughs) because that wasn't me like at midnight because I know I wasn't fully there, you know, and I didn't stress. I could have stressed way more about it and worried about it, but I didn't. And he came through, even though he didn't give me like what I was supposed to say when I first started praying about it. So yeah, those are just my thoughts. I loved those. And those were great stories, great examples of those things you were talking about it's so good to remember that i just oh i anyway sorry it's just so good to remember that he is always there yeah melanie so something that came to my mind as you guys are talking about math is um back to my experience at girls camp that i i was still doing those things we were still talking about scriptures and singing hymns and stuff like that um i just didn't have the high expectations of of what I was going to experience and what the spirit was going to feel like. So, you know, with math, you know, you can still, you know, give them the math to do, but 
just not have the expectations of like how fast they have to have things memorized or how fast they have to go through the book or you know just let it do do the things to learn it but let it take its time for that child yeah i again you go back to that my bad word you know the what i call a bad word which is expectations that can get us so tripped up by having having expectations that we or somebody else has imposed you know the state or friends or people at church or your you know your your father-in-law who's a teacher or something i mean just um what are what are what does the lord want that child to learn you know that blank blank page journal i can never think of the name of it but that lindsay does you know um that is once a week on Sunday. Okay, Heavenly Father, what does this child need for this week? What do we need to focus on? What do they need to do? Um, what do I need to know about that one? Okay, what does this one need? You know, what does this one need? What does my husband need? What do I need? What needs to be our focus for th this week? And um, I, if you ask, he will tell you. It's just so many times I think what well, I think what my problem is, he tells me things that I wasn't expecting to hear. So I'm not hearing that. Um, because I'm waiting. Thank you. Blank page brainstorm. Thank you. Um, I'm waiting to hear the answer that I'm pretty sure is going to come. And I don't even I, I've never thought that I do that, but I think maybe that's part of my problem is I'm expecting an answer in a certain category, maybe even, you know, and it's, it's not coming. It's something completely different. Yeah. Emily. I think for me, um, it's that surrendering my will to his. Yeah. And that's where I, cause I get this big picture and we've got, it's this, and this is what it needs to be instead of surrendering my will to his and saying what next. Because all I can see is what's in front of me and he sees the big picture. And so I need to let my big picture go and I need to go what's next. So I can take that step, that next step into the dark, letting my light follow me into the dark and becoming light along the path. And then, um, but remember like the big picture is his that I will live with him again that my family will live with him again that Christ is the reason all of that is possible and I just need to follow that is beautiful that is really beautiful and Emily I'm so grateful to you for saying that because that is a wonderful summary for what we were talking about today the big picture is his and I keep trying to make it mine I keep trying to share my big picture with him. <laughs> Look at my big picture. Isn't this great? Doesn't this sound like a good idea? Um, rather than just saying, okay, like you said, the big picture is his. Let him have that. And we just ask what's next. What next? What do I need to do next? And I have had great, wonderful peaceful experiences by doing that by just going one day at a time and then i forget so um i'm going to forgive myself come back and begin again so let's maybe try for a week just to humbly petition him and ask what next what next and let go of our big picture and let him direct it because it's going to be so much better different and maybe have some twists and turns that hurt a little bit and that are different than what we anticipate but um he sees further he sees all and knows what's best for us so anyway thank you for the conversation today thank you so much because these things were things i needed so I appreciate that y'all were um, willing to come and give your morning up to help me learn some things this morning. <laughs> I hope there was something good there for you too. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We will not meet for July. So I will put that in multiple places so that hopefully we can make sure everybody, everybody learns that so that nobody's confused. And then we'll come back August 5th. In the meantime, we can connect each other in all the various ways that we have to do that. So 
Anyway, okay, thank you, my friends, for being here. I hope you have a really wonderful weekend.